Good morning. On today's Coffee and Cleaners, we will be talking about something quite a bit newer than anything featured on the back of my my Coffee and Cleaners mug here, but it still goes back over half a century to the beginning of the retractable hose central vac industry. I guess you could call this the granddaddy of hide hose And this video ties in with um, the video I did with my good friend Evan in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Central Vacuum. He's in possession of a display board, including the original retractable valve. And this is like what you'd exhibit at a home show. Well, uh, thanks to my contact, uh, Bill at um, Vaculine, who ran his own Central Vac business uh, in Long Island for years and years and years, I've come to possession of this installation manual and several of the original patents for the Thomas system from Jetline Industries. And they made a standard system as well as a retractable, which they called the Retract-O-Vac. And I'll link to the to that display board video below. But some of these things are just kind of generic installation retrofits. But then about halfway through, and here's this power unit. I had one of these power units. It was a, just a green box, and you opened that trap door on the front to access the disposable bag. And in fact, the one I had had a reusable cloth bag with a zipper. But it was just a box that hung on the wall, and you would make the intake and exhaust connections. So you can see all this stuff is just standard systems. They use the round door beam type inlets. And they made a... Um, built-in system with piping that would actually be recessed into the wall so that's kind of cool and it would have an inlet for the area that the power unit was in so that's a neat idea but it didn't take off okay so starting here we have the retract ovac installation one thing that's interesting is they they use a section of flex hose from the inlet down through the wall and forming the first 90 degree elbow. They called that playa duct. And uh, you can see how you'd rough in the thing here, how you would drill down. And they're, see they're showing you drilling down from above, which is not standard retrofit procedure, but because just like today with chameleon and hide hose the hole that you cut in the wall for the valve itself is big enough that you can drill it from above i just usually don't like to drilling a two and a half inch hole blindly is kind of a recipe for problems and they're installing it from above here and here's our little diagram of how you would uh, run the piping how the hose would travel through the piping and this is a better one actually because it shows how sometimes you have to run away from the main line in order to have enough length to hold the hose but several cool things about this system about the retracto vac were first of all they had a bleed valve on the power unit and the power unit had a, a solenoid inside and you would push a button on the valve body and it would reverse the airflow literally blowing the hose out of the inlet so it was automatic ejection and retraction and they had just a retractable system that was one model and then they had the fully automatic the ejection retraction so this goes into that we have a selection of tools and <coughs> excuse me installation components. These look like kind of generic uh, accessories. They do have the Preco power brush available. This is from the late 60s, by the way. You'll see on these patents, they're from like 60. This was filed in 66, granted in 69. So this house was built in 70. How weird would it have been? To have a retracto vac from 1970 here. I don't know for how long these were sold, but it wasn't real long. 
Uh, they have a testing Y. That's interesting. I thought HP Products was the only uh, company that did the testing Y. Hose storage 90, hose storage 45. Very much like the original Hyda hose fittings, these would have been made by heating up straight sections of PVC tubing and carefully bending them. And then they made an offset here. So instead of the 22 and a half degree fittings that we get today, this was your, your, your double 22 and a half basically to go around an obstruction. And uh, the pictures aren't very clear here, but you can see the, the plug-in type valve as well as the retractable type valve. And it looks like they were using Eureka tools. That's a, that's a Eureka rug tool and a Eureka floor brush. So according to Bill LaMonica uh, of, of Vaculine, this literature came from somebody that still had this system in their house and in use working and they had circled the T610B which was the fully automatic retract and eject. You can see by that 110 inches of water lift that would have used the 115334 motor. And according to this Thomas Industries kind of like Newtone and Fasco and Rittenhouse and whoever else, they made a bunch of different home products. They weren't just in the vacuum business. So here we go with the patents. Interesting little element of patent ease. This patent is called vacuum cleaning method. Now to me, is a method is a way you do something, not a, a product. And uh, I've... I'm sure I've gotten a very technical expl explanation from my dad about why they use method and he's a patent attorney so speaking in patent ease is kind of his first language and then he learned English later on. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but you can see this uh, power unit installed in conjunction with several different retractable inlets each with their own hose and here is a cool diagram of that solenoid and the reversing valve so if you follow the piping here, this would be as you would be vacuuming the intake going through here into the filter bag and then to the motor. But when you actuate that solenoid, press the button, solenoid pulls this valve in and it switches those. That's very much like a, uh, like a swimming pool automatic valve. You know, you push the button and then the spa fills up. That's what this is doing, and the air from the motor exhaust is now going into the piping network and literally forcing that hose out of whichever inlet is open. And we show the innards of the valve itself. There's an early locking mechanism that's, you know, clamping down on the hose, kind of like Hyda hose does, but this doesn't appear to use a rubber bladder. We're going to kind of gloss through the specifications. This is all on Google Patents if you're so inclined to go down that wormhole. A method of cleaning an area serviced by a plurality of conduits, having outlets where in space throughout the area with all of said conduits being connected to a common source of vacuum that is total patent ease. Retractably is another. Patents are full of words that you never see anywhere else like retractably and slidably and frostoconical. And plurality, that's the other thing. They like to say plurality. I asked my dad, why don't they just say a bunch? <laughs> so, Hamrick is the inventor. Uh, James C. Hamrick uh, was alive in Shelby, North Carolina until within the last 10 years. And he started out as an electrician. And the process of using a vacuum to pull a string with a little piston, a little mouse attached to the end of it in order to pull wires through probably gave him the, he had a brain wave. Why couldn't we do this with the central vac hose? And here's the inlet. Inside the power unit, 
So I had a 610. I didn't have a 610B with the reversing valve. So mine, the exhaust just went straight out. It didn't wrap around and go through a solenoid like this. And this all looks very much like that display that Evan has. And you can see you had an indicator light with a hole so that the indicator was visible with the cover closed so that you could see if somebody else was using the system somewhere or if the system had been left running more exactly. Uh, and a push button to start the motor and another push button that you would hold down to reverse and cause the hose to push out of the wall. And there's your reversing valve in the, in the standard position and then the reverse position. Wow. Yep, there's a latching relay. This is um, just like what Central Vac International and Filtex, etc. used to use. Anybody who used the push button inlets, uh, they used a latching relay like this. Mechanically latching, not electrically latching. So, more patentees. Nice bedtime reading. Very good cure for insomnia. And here was one. Okay, so this is cool. This is the end of the hose with the little, the little rubber donut that stopped the hose from coming all the way out the wall unless you really yanked on it. This shows it being used in a standard plug-in wall inlet, just like they do today with Camport, Chameleon does. And according to Hide Hose, this was an option with the Hide Hose valves too, the bigger Hide Hoses that you could take the hose out and use it somewhere else. They said just nobody seemed interested in that. So a more abstract view of the power unit and the different piping. I never thought to use flexible hose for the retractable raceway. I just, it, it just never occurred to me that that could possibly work. But uh, Bill LaMonica, the guy that I got these from, says that, yeah, you can. It works. Another thing that you'll see if you link down to Evan's video is the hose that these used was a um, cloth covered, you know, like a hose on an old Electrolux or most canister vacuums through the 60s or 70s used a, a cloth braided covering on the hose. And that's what this had. And I believe on Evans it's turquoise. And, uh, Suction cleaning system and method. All these patents are kind of related, but they, they go after very specific things. The job of a patent attorney is to make sure all your bases are covered so that every element that's patentable is protected. So despite Hamrick having the lock on retractable hose central vacuums, it doesn't appear, this may have been an idea before its time, or it was just too complex to be, you know, even today we get questions. Well, what happens when the spring wears out? And you have to explain to people how the retractable hose system actually works. That looks like an old Black & Decker, the early Black & Decker power units. But who knows, you know, that's obviously a very simplistic line drawing. And an early version of the valve itself having this, roller mechanism that folds out and activates the switch and and this was filed in 65 and I think we're just about to the end of it so Cool little part of central vac and retractable hose history. Another thing I'll note is they did not attempt to make the hoses any longer than 30 feet. Um, if you look in 
Chomper says hello. If you look in back in here, it says 30 feet. So they weren't using the extra long hoses because even with a 30 foot hose, that 115334 motor had good suction, but not real great suction. And um, so they wouldn't have wanted to make it any longer. So anyway, uh, please check out Evan's video. It's very interesting to see this in the flesh and uh, it is so super unusual to see anything like this um, still around today. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Happy vacuuming.